Hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Michigan Football, presented by PNC Bank. I'm Jim Brandstetter, along with head coach Brady Hoke. 38-31 overtime. What are you trying to do to my heart? Well, you know, we like to keep people in the stands, Jimmy, and, uh, uh, you know, was, uh, we had a great crowd, you know, number one, and uh, when uh, Jordan Kovac said we want to play at that end, uh, where all our students were, and that, that was that was a neat point in the game, and the kids went out and played. And that was in overtime, and it took an incredible play to get you to overtime. That ball's in the air. We'll see it a little bit later. That ball's in the air. You're on the sideline. What are you thinking? Because that's your last gasp. Well, I don't know if there was any negative thoughts. It was just one of those things that I thought Devin did a nice job, extended the play a little bit, got up in uh, the pocket, and uh, Roy had tremendous uh, concentration and focus. And a little batted ball comes into his arms, and that allows Michigan to tie it. The finish to the Michigan-Northwestern game was amazing, and there was a lot at stake, but Michigan somehow pulled it out. Doug Karsh has the final minutes play-by-play -play story. Michigan and Northwestern on Saturday playing a virtual elimination game in the Legends division. The Wolverines with the improbable come from behind win. The major players take us through the anatomy of an incredible comeback. It's Devin Gardner, four wide receivers trailing by three from the left hash. Some people may misconceive it as a Hail Mary, but we practice things like that and practice every single Thursday. You know, make sure we're ready for a situation like that. And, and today we got that situation. Sets the throw, three-man rush, eight in coverage. And Devin's going to heave it deep on a post cut for round three. I saw the middle of the field wide open, and once Devin locked eyes on me, he threw it up. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and me being a receiver, I had to go make the play. And I wanted to make the play because I needed the ball because to help my teammates. He tips the ball to himself. He's got it at the 10-yard line. The clock will stop with eight seconds to go. I went up and got it. Well, I actually tipped it, and then I tipped it to my helmet, and then I brought it down. Once I saw it, I caught it. I was like, oh, man, we good. We in field goal range now. What a catch by Roundtree. And I just gave Tree a chance to make a play, and he made one of the greatest catches I've ever seen in a game. Brendan Gibbons' field goal was good, but there was still work to do. Michigan on offense first in overtime. The Wolverines had to settle down and get the job done. That's a great call, and, and I know it's going to work because they're, they're all barreled in, and, and if I get the edge, I have no choice but to get in the end zone. But, of course, the game wasn't over, and Michigan's defense had to stand up and make one more stop of Northwestern's very potent offense. Got four players at linebacker, running play up the middle, and it is stuffed by Kenny Devins, and Michigan wins in overtime. I read my, my keys, the D-line, they did a good job of penetrating, I made a play. And then, you know, it was actually deja vu. I dreamt that moment before in my life. And uh, when it happened, James Ross, who I think was the first guy to come in there and, you know, grab me. And at that point, I, I could feel the pressure from, from the whole team. And I got out of there as soon as I could. I didn't, I didn't want to get trampled, <laughs> trampled on. <laughs> I saw demons almost get in trouble and go to jail for hitting somebody that hard. I've never seen anybody hit, that, hit someone that hard. And I think it has to be illegal, honestly. So that, that's, I, don't, I hope he doesn't hit me like that at practice. I hope I don't make him mad. That's the only thing. Well, clearly, Devin Gardner liked the hit by Demons on that fourth down play. I would imagine you did, too. But I thought it was interesting because you kind of baited him into thinking you had a defense out there against a pass, and they tried to run it, and you stoned him. Well, you know, I think Kenny made two really great plays at the end of the game, you know, and Kenny played well for us most of the football game. But uh, the one on the quarterback draw, he, you know, he does a nice job on that one. Jabril Black helped him on it a little bit. And then Jabril on the last play makes a great move. Greg makes a great call to uh, line up a little bit differently with three backers kind of inside, the ends wide. And uh, Kenny made a nice uh, tackle. And that's the thing. When you get the game on the line, your veteran guys have to step up and make plays. And I thought at the end of that game, Kenny Demons on a couple of possessions just was outstanding, unblockable. Well, I think our seniors, you know, those are the guys. Roy makes a catch. Kenny makes a hit. Will Campbell played a very good football game for us up front. Uh, seniors really have to step out when it's their, their chance to, and they did that. Well, they did indeed. When we come back, we'll have a games with the highlights. Plus, we'll visit a very happy Michigan locker room. Stay with us. Inside Michigan football is presented by PNC Bank the official bank of the University of Michigan Athletics, PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. 
Number one, we've kept ourselves where we want to be in this Big Ten title race. Is that not true? Yes, yes sir. sir. Number two, you got to play 60 minutes of football or maybe more as a football team to be a championship team. <coughs> and I can tell you, I'm so daggone proud of how you played together. Uh, defensively, we had our ups and downs today, obviously. Offensively, we, we, we struggled a little bit, but late in the game, when we had to get it done, we got it done. All right? That's a football team. That's a football team. You come out of a game like uh, Michigan Northwestern, tight right down to the finish, even though you didn't play as well as you think, as you see from the locker room, never discount a win. Well, there's no question, and Northwestern's a good football team. You know, let's uh, face the facts. They were 7-2 and two going into the game, uh, lost two games in the fourth quarter that they had leads or they'd be undefeated. And, you know, I thought I was proud of our team. They stuck together. Uh, the sideline demeanor, all the things that you look for as a coach, they were behind each other the whole time. Let's take a look at the highlights. In the first half, they threw the ball well. They they really, this offense is something. Well, he threw the ball better than we thought he might, and uh, we knew him in the football game. We just got to play a little deeper on the coverage there. Uh, the real bread and butter was, you know, they're going to run the football and get the ball on the perimeter, and between uh, Venrick Mark and Kane Coulter, we've got to do a better job getting off blocks. I thought for the most part, the interior runs, we did a nice job with. The touchdown there by Mark gives it a 7 nothing Northwestern lead. But then you come back, and you come back through the air. Well, I think, you know, to get them back a little bit, their safeties were down, and we wanted to get them off a little bit, throwing some hitches, some play action. Under center were all things that uh, I thought uh, we did a nice job. I thought Roy played probably his best football game of the year, uh, catching the ball with his hands. And, and again, Devin Gardner's feet, again, this naked bootleg really helps out. Well, it does, and, you know, he's an athletic quarterback, and uh, uh, he also is a guy that does a nice job in the pocket or under center. That touchdown ties the game at seven, and then you get a big turnover. I thought this was very important in the game because it comes after a time where you turned it over to them. Right. It, it, perfect timing. You know, Jabril Black worked his, heck, uh, uh, his tail off to get in there. And here's a scramble again the feet of Devin Gardner and a big third down play and he converts. Well, he's, you know, didn't have anything down the field. The protection was okay, but started breaking down and then uh, he did a nice job. This was a nice run here by Thomas Rawls and uh, really uh, finding the hole underneath. That makes it a 14-7 game. You have the lead. They come in late with uh, Simeon, their quarterback, the thrower. And, and this, I think, throws you a little bit off because this gets him down a position, and then right before the half, this is just a great throw and catch. Well, you you, you know, you hate to give up points at the end of the, the half and give them some momentum, and that's exactly what we did, but uh, it's a 0-0 football game going into third quarter. All right, tied at halftime, 14. This is their opening possession. This is something you don't want to see. No, we, we've got to do a better job in the coverage there. At the same time, you've got to get a little more pressure to make them uncomfortable. And that put it 21-14, uh, and then they come back again. And this is an option on a third down play to Trumpy where they get the first down. Yeah, they, they were, uh, I think, Jimmy, right at 50% on third down conversions, which means we do we need to do a better job. Uh, great play by Brendan Byer and Craig Rowe here to get the sack. And you hold them to a field goal, makes it a 24-14 game. And then you come back again and go deep with a pump fake. Well, it was a double move and uh, nice catch by Gallon. Safety's coming off the half field. And again, concentration by Gallon, huge. Come back after that, you go to a check down, and this is where Fifth Toussaint does the rest with his feet. Well, and this is one of the things, you know, uh, Devin does a great job checking it down. We get a great block right there by Gallon, and then Fitz does a nice job taking it in the end zone. Touchdown makes it a 24 21 Northwestern game. And then. Uh, Great defense again. Blitz finally gets home by Jordan Kovacs, forced an incomplete pass. Well, you know, we, we, we didn't blitz a lot because of uh, his ability to get out of uh, harm's way, but that one worked out well. And then Gardner goes to the air again. This is a great throw, maybe his best all year. Uh, very good throw and uh, good catch. We had the route in the first half, and uh, it just overthrew it a little bit, but that was a nice job there. Uh, Fitz is running hard, I think. Uh, we were a little better at the line of scrimmage point of attack, but we've got to be better. Goal line, you go to Funches. And this is, I think, great patience by uh, Devin. 
But going to a matchup that's a mismatch for you. Well, it's a good matchup for him. So, you know, and Devin has great hands and goes up for the ball. And that gives uh, you the lead. Now, uh, you've got a great defensive effort, but you get a penalty there on Simeon. He throws the ball away. <laughs> You'd have gotten the ball back. Yeah, it would have been. And, uh, you know, those are things that we've got to make better decisions. They get a touchdown out of that. It looks really bad. 31 28 Northwestern leads. Then you come back. Looks like you're going to get into the game. You throw the interception. Now it really looks dire. Well, we had a very good kickoff return there by North Fleet, and uh, Devin just misread it a little bit. But this is where I thought our defense really did a great job. I thought they really stood up uh, when they had to get the ball back for the offense. This is the play. Tell us uh, about how you get the ball down with 18 seconds to go and the juggling catch. Well, just great concentration, but we were fortunate enough. We had a good punt return. Uh, we got the ball up uh, closer to midfield to be able to go and throw the football. Ties it at 31 and go to overtime. Again, Roy Roundtree makes a play. Nice, nice throw, nice hitch route, and a great job by Roy and Devin. And again, we get on the perimeter here with Devin and uh, get in the end zone. And then here's the fourth down and two play that your defense stops him with. Yeah, and this is a great job. Jabril forces the, the, the guy to hand the ball off and a great hit by Kenny. Game over. Michigan wins 38-31. When you come out of a game like that, what's going through your mind? I mean, it was almost lost, and then you get to overtime, and then you win it. Well, I, really, the attitude of the kids. I mean, that's what you're, you're, you're most concerned with, and I thought – as a team, we stayed together. It truly was a team win. I mean, the, the punt return, the special teams got involved to get us in that position. Defensively, we got the ball back, you know, uh, for the offense. So I think, you know, uh, it's a team win. And that's what it was. More importantly, it was a Michigan win, a team win, and that's all that matters. When we come back, lots more. Stay with us, please. You know, actually, the whole time, I wasn't even really that nervous. I thought during the game, you know, just the game plan we had and the kind of character of guys we had, I really didn't have like a, a worry that we were going to lose that game. I think we prepared well. And I think overall as a team win, I was excited about it. This week's Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the Week caught a season high five passes on Saturday for 129 yards. And he moved into 12th place on the all time yards receiving list, passing Derek Alexander. Roy Roundtree is the 12th Michigan receiver to eclipse the 2,000-yard career receiving mark. We got to make plays. You know, Coach always emphasizes that. And uh, once the ball in the air, you got to go get it. And, you know, once we do that, we got to come down with it. So we really got to focus and finish the play. And it was really good to see Roy Roundtree have a big game. Because you said even in the back of the beginning of the season, when he was given the Desmond Howard legacy jersey, he really picked the leadership role up. Well, he hasn't had a lot of numbers, he still has played hard and never complained. Well, he's been a great leader. I mean, that's one reason um, we made the decision that he would represent uh, uh, the legacy of Desmond Howard and how he played the game and how he helped lead his team. And that's, that's what Roy's given us. And he's played hard every week. And most importantly, he's been a, a really a guy in that senior class who stood out as a leader. Speaking of legacies, uh, there was a family this past Saturday that was remembered, a family of legends. Stay with us and we'll tell you about that story. Today, we honor one of the great Michigan athletic families in school history. All three Wistard brothers wore the number 11 jersey for the Michigan football program. All three played tackle, were selected consensus All-Americans, and were inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and Michigan Hall of Honor. Francis Whitey Wistert played on three consecutive Big Ten championship teams, including two back-to-back -back national championship squads. Whitey was also Big Ten Conference MVP in baseball and later played for the Cincinnati Reds. He was an assistant football coach at Michigan before practicing law for 14 years in New York and later becoming a director of industrial relations for Eltra Corporation in Toledo, Ohio. Albert the Ox Wistert was the most valuable player of the 1942 Michigan team coached by Fritz Chrysler. 
Al played in the 1943 East-West Shrine Game and then played nine seasons at offensive tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles in the National Football League. He earned All-Pro honors eight times during his professional career. Following his NFL career, Al was a life insurance salesman in California. He now resides in Grants Pass, Oregon. Alvin Wistard began his collegiate football career at age 30, following 12 years of work in a factory and service to his country in the United States Marine Corps during World War II. Alvin played defensive tackle for the undefeated 1947 and 1948 Wolverine football teams, both of which finished the season ranked number one. Alvin holds the distinction of being the oldest college football player ever selected as an All-American, having been selected in the 1949 team at age 33. Alvin worked in insurance for several years before becoming a manufacturing representative. Today, Francis, Albert, and Alvin are all being honored as Michigan football legends. This recognition includes a unique and highly visible patch that will be worn on the number 11 game and practice jerseys, as well as customized lockers assigned to number 11 in Schembechler Hall and Michigan Stadium. These three brothers, along with all of Michigan's football legends, will be honored in the Schembechler Hall Museum. 92-year-old Albert and family members traveled to Ann Arbor to be recognized in the Legends pregame ceremony. Oh, it's very thrilling, very exciting. Senior Captain Jordan Kovacs will wear the framed number 11 for the remainder of the season. It's a huge honor. I think I've worn 32 long enough. I'll always be 32, but I think it's an awesome opportunity to recognize our legends, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm truly honored. That whole family was really thrilled you spent some time talking yeah. about that experience. That's awesome. You know, they, they told me I'm part of the Worcester family, and that sounds good to me. They're pretty, pretty prestigious. They've got a, they've got a good uh, lineage going. Ready? Ready. FXM in H. Congratulations, Miggy, on an MVP season. in Michigan Stadium. And I'll tell you, the time's gone quick. Next week, that's the last time. You'll go through that tunnel. There's only one way in and one way out, and you'll come up that tunnel. We got to have an incredible week of preparation, mentally, physically. It's going to be a feeling, uh, uh, a feeling that uh, I can't explain, and, you know. Uh, I made a lot of plays here, and uh, I love the team that I've been with. And the whole time I've been here, I enjoy coming down the tunnel. So I don't know how it's gonna feel being up my last time running down the tunnel. You kind of sad about it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That last trip down the tunnel is big for the seniors. And uh, the one question you got to ask is: Senior quarterback Denard Robinson, Devin Gardner's filled in great. What's the situation there? Well, it's day to day, you know, and uh, we're, we're fortunate we have two guys who are pretty good quarterbacks. It's a good situation to be in. Isn't yeah, it? it is. And it's a great situation to have your seniors go against Iowa, knowing it's their last trip. It's going to be emotional. Well, it is. Their last game in Michigan Stadium, and, and our seniors haven't beaten I Iowa. That's motivation enough. Make sure you join us next week. We'll tell you all about it right here on Inside Michigan Football. Inside Michigan Football, presented by PNC Bank, is brought to you in part by the University of Michigan C.S. Mott Children's Hospital, mottchildren.org. By Hyundai, loyalty can't be explained, but it explains a lot. Show your loyalty at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. And by Abso Pure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908.